Hindu devotees bathe in toxic Yamuna River. So a lot of people in our community wanted us to talk about it, so we're covering it this week. On November 10th, Hindu devotees gathered on the banks of the hazardously polluted Yamuna River in New Delhi to celebrate Chath Puja as the water of the river was covered in toxic foam. The foam is so plentiful that it gives the river the appearance of being covered in snow and ice glaciers. On Chath Puja, Puja the devotees uh, take what is supposed to be a self-cleansing dip uh, in the Ganges River, including its tributary rivers. Unfortunately, the Ganges and its tributaries, including the Yamuna, have some of the most are are some of the most polluted rivers in the world. Factories and other industrial plants are known to dump their waste directly into the river, despite government regulations. Unfazed by health hazards due to the polluted water. Some people stood knee deep reciting prayers while others submerged themselves completely and drank the water. One devotee told reporters, what fear? If we are scared, then how can we pray? Wow. Wait, what is this foam? What is the foam? So um, it's, it's just caused by pollutants. Um, That's how bad it is that it yeah. foams? And they're yeah. like going inside of it. Yes. What's going to happen to them? Um. Actually, I found. Have, like, third... uh, let me look up really quickly, uh, because I found a report of like what this could do to you. It said something about um communal. I mean, not communal, <laughs> neurological problems. This is such a visual illustration of how what religion considers cleansing is literally the opposite like when you consider washing yourself in toxic water as cleansing so like what religion considers clean and pure and it you know they consider what's clean and pure literally washing yourself in toxic water what is she doing what is this woman doing She's she's standing in the water and she's like assembling these little leaves on the banks is, in this little why like line. Oh, I don't know what it represents, look, but it's got to represent look, something. Look, she's like so busy making that thing, and all of a sudden the reporter comes and she's like surprised that the reporter look at her. She's well, like, yeah, it's like a my... shrine, I guess. She's making a shrine next to toxic water, and she's like, "What are you doing, lady? Are you okay?" Um, but guys, given that given that cleansing yourself in toxic water is considered cleansing and purifying, then you should you, 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 does it work the other way around? So things that they consider unpure and evil and dirty are probably good things, right? So this is when when Hindutva and like other religious people come and tell you that oh, your blasphemous art is like evil and degenerate and unclean, okay, and you know dirty then you have to know like this is what they consider clean so these are the standards that we're dealing with but go on yeah i mean well this issue with the ganges in the high levels of pollution and also just the air quality in delhi in general i mean this has been going on for a really long time this isn't anything new but um so from the hindustan times Poisoned by tons of sewage, industrial, and domestic waste, the Yamuna in Delhi is frothing, one of the signs of the uh, exceptionally high levels of pollution in the river. Um, the visuals of devotees taking a dip in the froth-filled waters of the Yamuna River sent chills down the spines of residents of Delhi and worried environmentalists. Um, while the BJP leaders alleged that the AAP government, that's like local government, um, did not allow chalk celebrations on the Yamunata banks to hide the pathetic state of the river, AAP's Gop uh, Gopal Ra Rai and Rajhav uh, Chadha blamed the government in Uttar Pradesh and Haryana for the frothing river. So it's government officials going back and forth and blaming each other. Um, what is the froth formation? This is a phenomenon that takes place on many lakes and streams. Foam bubbles are produced when organ organic matter decomposes. The foam produces molecules, uh, have, have uh, then it talks about it being hydrophonic and hydrophobic. Um, and then the bubbles float to the surface and gradually accumulate. What causes the froth? I the presence of the phosphates in uh, surf, 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 surf factants, God, I can't talk. In untreated sewage from the Delhi, Haryana, and Uttar Pradesh is a major reason behind the frothing in the river. Um, 
blah, 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 blah. What are the sources of river? Untreated sewage may contain soap detergent particles. The other sources include um, industrial waste, organic matter from decomposing vegetation, and the presence of uh, filamentous bacteria. The pollution from sugar and paper industries in Uttar Pradesh that travel through the Hindun Canal also cause the pollution in the Yamuna. What are the health hazards? Short-term exposure can lead to skin irritation and allergies. If ingested, these chemicals may cause gastrointestinal problems and diseases like typhoid. Long-term exposure can, to heavy metals and industrial pollutants can cause neurological issues and hormonal imbalances. And this is, um, I read somewhere that this Wait. river provides th three-fourths of the water for Delhi in general. Um and wow. this has major concerns obviously from environmentalists and health officials would they would they get something like this dude i don't know I, I think like that would they would literally have their an animal version of their gods and goddesses if the fish turns out like this in the river but what what did they do they do they use this? What what is this water used for? Like for farming as well? Like obviously, right? So was, partially, this, other than health hazards for individuals, will this have any effect on the 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 plant the the farms? Also, the animals don't animals. I am not this? an environmentalist or biologist, so I know. I'm just I'm just thinking out loud the implications that this could have on the wildlife. How long has this mm -hmm. been happening? Like I knew, okay, guys, a lot of people are like, oh, this has been for a while, okay? I knew these rivers were polluted, okay? I thought pollution, like dead people pollution because like of the, um, all the dead body burning that they do over there and dump them in the river. And some of them, sometimes it burned them ha like not completely. And I thought like it will, uh, the implications was like for disease for people who live close to the water. But if it's, this toxic like look, that is foaming like this it goes beyond just human and it was just gonna like full circle back to humans because this could this ha this must again we don't know i'm not an environmentalist as well but this must have some really significant effect on on the whole environment not just the people who are washing themselves in it like what is india doing oh what is that like oh these are just the more photos to show like how Whoa. big it is why is that person inside there? Is he suicidal? Like, do, do they not know what they're swimming in? Like, go to that other person that was just like lying there. Yeah, it's Look huge. At that. It looks like glaciers. Do, does India not have like environmental regulations when it comes to like polluting the most one of their most important rivers? I mean, yes. This is the, like a national treasure that they should be protecting, isn't it? Yes. And a lot of these industrial plants just violate these regulations openly. It was kind of funny. I saw reports that the government was just spraying water at the foam to try to get it to go away. It's like, oh, honey, that's not going to. I I have a suggestion. I have a suggestion. Okay. Hmm. You ready? Okay. Indian government, maybe use some of the people who send you send after us after atheist republic for gods for drawing cartoons of your gods and goddesses maybe redirect some of the resources of all the people who are working in the government to take down our twitter account and block our facebook page in india and give us strikes on youtube maybe use our resources to apply the the same rules that you have on your books to the industries that are pollute that are violating your own rules to pollute your rivers like maybe maybe instead of protecting your gods and goddesses protect your protect, protect your rivers where you're with that your people rely on you know maybe maybe your priorities are misplaced i i have a i have a suspicion that your priorities are a little bit misplaced where you think like you don't have enough manpower to go after the people who are polluting your rivers but you do happen to have enough manpower to go after people who are offending you for going after for making a beautiful sexy cartoon out off of your goddesses maybe maybe a little bit of waste of a tax taxpayer money i don't know like guys for people who don't know they have they have taken us all the way to the supreme court in india 
okay and they have filed they have spent legal money and uh, filing FIRs against us and the government has actively been involved in shutting our website blocking our Facebook page in India and removing our Twitter account so amazing that's just so, the tip of good, the iceberg yeah so yeah maybe maybe if you cared about your river um a little well, bit it's more so ironic too because it's characters yeah. It's my understanding that there are many people who actually treat the Ganges and its tributary rivers as a god. Like it yeah, is a living so, god. And this is how yeah. it's treated. <laughs> so like we you... do a, a drawing that I think is just beautiful and artistic and all hell breaks loose. But right. what do you think Good. about the religious angle to this and not just like the environmental angle? Because I don't want people to think that we're covering this news as if Indians are just like, dirty and smelly because that's not true and that's not oh like, no what, the what i believe but we have to be careful when we cover news like this because that could be like the message that some people are getting this is, guys this is not the the ther okay this is it's not dirty and smelly this is toxic okay this is not like a stereotype of the people this is like because the, when people want to be racist and bigoted they're talking about people who don't wash themselves okay this is not that okay this is like when we, people are like, oh, you people are dirty. They're, they're, they're talking about, you know, poor people or like people who don't have the capabilities to, they don't, it's not even their, people are dirty. A lot of them, it's not their fault. They just don't have the resources. They don't have access to shower and access to a place that they could wash themselves or access to clean water or soap and stuff like that. This is not that. This is actively people do taking the time to wash themselves, but it's just toxic water. Okay. This is not like us trying to, um stereotypically like i didn't even think about that Susie, until like i had this like you reaction to you even saying that obviously we're not trying to say that this is like this is religion this is religion this is okay so for us to make it clear that this is not about um some other people like t telling all oh, these are dirty people we say the same thing about fecal matter in baptism you know in holy water right true the fact that yeah so i actually didn't know have, about that until recently I, you told me that i was like what <laughs> yes so we have reported like before susanna joined their team when we had atheist republic news we many times highlighted the fact that when you go to a church and you touch the holy water you're and you touch it on your face you're putting poop on your face okay there's fecal matter in holy water in catholic churches stay away from that thing if you touch it make sure you um sanitize your hand that that stuff is dirty okay so if i say when people go to church and they touch holy water that thing is dirty that thing is could be filled with diseases and be careful with that we're not saying catholics are dirty we're not saying catholics people don't wash themselves that's not what we're saying we're just saying this religious practice um is is bringing dirty you know it's it's just dirty it's disgusting okay that's what we're saying Damn it. Thank you By for way, highlighting. You completely yeah. turned into 8 bit Armin. Oh, turn off. I'm going to turn off my VPN. Give me a sec. Uh, but was, was that what did I say? Did it make sense though? Like, was it, um, was it my audio cut or not? No, no, you, I, we could still hear you. I, yeah, I just think okay. it's important to highlight because, um, I have a lot of friends in India or from India. And I talk to them about how we talk about the country um, because I'm a very self-reflective person and it's something that I care about. And I want to be um, uh, sensitive and thoughtful about the way I talk about these issues, right? And that's the main thing that they say is like, you know, don't perpetuate like those stereotypes about like country or the people. Um, and so I, I just wanted to take a moment to say that. I mean, this isn't um, entirely a religious uh, st story. Like, this is a larger environmental story. I think, for me, the religious aspect of this is that um, I you kick, almost cannot get a more visible sign of danger and, like, do not touch. And right. people still feel compelled to go in and expose themselves to these risks and these harms because of superstitions that they've been brought up in. I do want to thank you for being mindful of us not um, spreading bigotry, you know, like this is why you're so valuable to have here. Like I was completely, I was completely blind to us potentially doing that right now. So your awareness of it and mindfulness of that is so very 
you, you know, helpful. So thank you for that. Like, oh, well, thank this you. is why, this is why sometimes maybe I have been not as good as being careful to not intentionally, like maybe sometimes like I said something that was like not at all intention, trying to be bigoted in any way, but people say that was irresponsible because even if I didn't intend it, um, I should have been care more careful about how it could have been read, right? How could have it, it could have, you know, as, as a content creator, you should be re held responsible for not just what you say, but also not being mindful, mindful enough of, of uh, how it could be perceived, okay? You are responsible for what your community takes, not just what you intended to say. So it's, you, you know, it's, you are a lot more socially aware than I am, and you, it's, you know, I'm really grateful yeah. that you have you. Sneha is saying, it's a pretty old excuse that I have friends in India, and this proves that I am not a racist. And I know that I'm often with uh, Sneha is against us, but I will use this as an opportunity to, to say, this is not me trying to pull the, you know, I have an Indian friend card, like not that kind of situation. What I'm trying to highlight is that this is something that I actively think about. And I have a lot of friends from this country and I use them as a resource um, yep. and it's invaluable to me in the way that we cover it and talk about it on this channel. And um, I, I check in with them and I, I want to listen to what they have to say as well, because um, if, if they had criticisms of me and I welcome it, um, I want to I want to know. So you're an idiot. OK, you weren't even <laughs> listening to what she's saying. OK, she didn't say I have friends in India, therefore I'm not a racist, you moron. She was saying, I have friends in India and I check in upon them to make sure that I'm reporting these accurately and I'm not misrepresenting Indian people or like trying to do more harm than good. That's what she was saying. She was saying like she relies on the resources she has to double check what she's saying. Not that she's not racist just because she has Indian friends. You are an idiot. Maybe pay attention before commenting. Yeah, in um, fact, I just blocked someone in the chat who was actually being just racist towards Indians. Because that's uh, oh, not what I support here. Okay. But um, hey, wait, we... Randolph. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, before... yeah, read Randolph before. Richardson is saying, I've always had a good impression of Atheist Republic because I've spoken in person with Armin Navabi a few times, and I know oh. he values diversity as part of his opposition to bigotry. Heart. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you, Randolph. That's very sweet. Um, <laughs> I have my gift. <laughs> Goes away. Susanna gives a polite response to a small bigotry. Armin, you're an idiot. <laughs> Typical. Typical. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, part of part of not being a bigot is not to hold back just because somebody's supposed to be of a different race. Okay, treat treat everybody equal. Um, can we? Uh... I I bash everyone equally. <laughs> <laughs> Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder Armin Avabi blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below. 